and honored to welcome Dr. Kiran Bedi for our inaugural address. Dr. Kiran Bedi holds the distinction of being India's first and highest women ranking officer, having joined the Indian Police Service in 1972. Her expertise includes more than 35 years of creative and reformative policing and prison management. She's a leading social activist. She has also worked with the United Nations. She became the first Indian to be appointed as United Nations Civilian Police Advisor in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations, for which she was awarded a UN medal. She represented India in international forums on crime prevention, drug abuse, police, prison reform, and women's issues like gender divide in India, leadership and female empowerment. She has addressed audiences at the American, British, European, Indian universities, corporate and civil society groups. She's the former Puducherry Lieutenant Governor. She has been voted as the MSN Most Admired Indian Female Icon 2011 and India's Most Trusted Women. Her efforts was to prevent crime, reform prisons and drug abuse and support women's causes. Dr. Kiran Bedi is the founder of two NGOs, Navajodi and India Vision Foundation, which reaches out to thousands of underserved children, women, and men. She has been in the vanguard of a nationwide India against corruption movement in police and prison reforms. Dr. Kiran Bedi is a recipient of the prestigious Raman Magasasi Award, also called the Asian Nobel Peace Prize, and several other Indian and international awards. She voluntarily retired as the Director General at the Bureau of Police Research and Development in 2007. Dr. Kiran Bedi is also the author of several books, including her biography, I Dare. She anchors radio and television shows as well as she's a columnist with leading newspapers and magazines. She has received numerous awards. She holds Masters in Political Science and obtained LLB in Delhi University. She did her PhD in Social Sciences at Indian Institute of Technology, India, and has been a national and an Asian tennis champion. I welcome Dr. Kiran Bedi for the inaugural address. Ma'am, it's our honor to have you here with us today. Um, we would like to hear from you on addressing women on leadership during this COVID-19 world. And if you could speak to a few words on what is stopping women from coming into leadership. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Very, very grateful to the World Malayali Council American Region for having invited me. I'm very honored. And I, I must say that it was a special choice out of all the invitations today, we are all women getting. You were a, my very preferred choice. And of course, uh, very strongly recommended by nobody other than somebody who's very dear to me is Simi Santha, who runs a, a, a Rita Pashavriya Center for Autism and ABA Services. So I owe this to her, but thank you, World, World Malayali Council. I have a very special regard and feeling because Malayali was my first language taught, regional language in National Police Academy. So I see when you learn a few words and I had to pass, but now I've forgotten, don't test me at all, I'll fail. But I was taught, uh, Malayali was my regional language. I was taught at the National Police Academy because one had to take a, region, a language. So Malayali was a few words and I could speak a few till, till Tamil took over <laughs> and others. Anyway, thank you so much. I have a very, very special regard for you and certainly what the uh, the region stands for. So congratulating you since I, this is now webinar is the way uh, and I'm finding this so very efficient right now. Now, the thoughts which are quickly coming, I'll answer your question you asked. Why aren't women coming more into leadership, right? I will answer that. Meanwhile, I just have an introductory remark is, yes. but remember that no two of us are similar. I'll tell you why. The no two women are similar because of the different nature and nurturance we are all coming up with. We are all born with a different, and we are born with nature, nature, internally. All of us, like for instance, I've seen a little child the other day, um, wants home food, doesn't want outside food. So what is the nature the child is already born with? He wants a makhan and a roti and doesn't want outside food. What is the nature? This is nature. Now the nurturance is the mother is introducing that boy to other kinds of foods and at, at the timing. So that's nurturance. We women, 
are born with a particular nature. And we certainly have extra qualities biologically because, they, because of the innate nature of the female gender. But nurturance enhances it. Nature um, empowers it. Nurturance empowers it. And who is the nurturer? The parents, nobody else. It's the parents and then your school teacher, the formative years of school. College much comes after. It's a school, home outside school, home, the, um, the school outside the home, and the home, a school inside the home, which matters a lot. We're a father. And, so I think we, those who be nurtured positively with energy, with confidence, and giving us a right location and place, I think are very blessed. Those of us women who are ahead, uh, ahead in life or are doing well, I think owe it to our parents. It could be father, it could be mother, it could be both. So my uh, friends, I'm a product of both nature and nurtures and the uh, rewards I'm reaping because of that. Now you might ask me, uh, why aren't women into more leadership? My friends, the major leader is, first of all, is the home. The home responsibilities actually pull, pull, hold her back. She chooses to, she prefers. The moment the woman in, in, at work becomes a parent, her, she gets divided in, in many ways. And if she's got home support, if she's got home support, she's right up there. But if she doesn't have the family support, because this, our systems don't support yet, for instance, if you ask me, one thing which we, we women need to ask is day boarding schools. Because you're not home. Working women are not home when the child comes back from work, from school. The child comes back at three. And what does the child do till from three to six or three to seven till the mother returns or the father returns? We do not have day boarding school as a concept. Every school is not a day boarding school. Every a school finishes because teachers also want to go home because they also have homes to go to. But if there was a day boarding school concept, then every child is looked after. Then every child does extracurricular activities. Every child, every girl or a boy gets all that attention of sports, of reading, homework finished, and the child says, mommy, I'm no bag home. The child doesn't take bag home, goes home at seven, parents are also back, they chat, they meet, they talk, and it's done. So I think the biggest deficiency around the world, which is holding back women, is your absence of family support. And even though you are at, at the middle level equal with the men in professional positions, you sometimes withhold yourself from such increments and such leadership positions or travel and mobility, and even the next promotion, because you want to be home also with your children. And they are at the examination. Nothing else, I'm telling you. Nothing else keeps the, is, is keeping back the woman. And secondly, is the elder care. Two things, two care actors, child care, elder care. Because again, it is not equally, equally shared. Child care is not getting equally shared. Elder care is not being equally shared. So with the result, the whole pressure falls on her shoulders, the woman's shoulders. So poor woman, she surrenders her, uh, uh, her, uh, her promotional capability. So she loses out on the C, C positions, the chairperson's positions. Those women, I think one of our greatest story is Indira Nui. Indira Nui, I think amazingly balanced her uh, career as 12 years as the CEO of uh, PepsiCo. It's a very, very exceptional accomplishment of Indira. And you, every time you hear Indira, she calls all the time talks about the, the support systems. And do you know how they manage support systems? By family networking. Turn by turn, the mother-in-law came, the father-in-law came, the sister-in-law came, the sister came, the close friend came. And that's how they looked after the nanny. Now, we all can afford child care facility. But the question is, you cannot leave the child. It is nothing but child care and elder care mostly falling on the women's shoulders, that is holding her back. Nothing else, not her capability, not her skill, not her qualifications. I'm also saying not the people, because when she starts delivering with greater integrity and concern, the rank and file want her, but then she herself disappears. 
or she herself chooses part time. But anyway, these days working from home is becoming the norm, which is a good idea. I think if you are really looking for solutions, I is creating institutional systems by which the child care, the elder care has has systems of care. So I think that is not existing. Child care is not existing. Elder care is not existing. It's falling back on your own respective families. So I'm answering your question, my friend. Why? What is holding it? Majority is holding back. Third and last is, I think, is how even women who are at home most of the time, how do they manage their energy? Even when they can afford to delegate things, they want to feed the feed everything themselves. They want to feed. Now they feel winning the hearts and minds of the families through that, that feeding. It's great to be uh, cooking well. It's a great hobby. It's a great rec re recreation. But delegating, distributing responsibilities so that she also gets her energy for her own yoga, for her own reading, for her own networking, for her own sisterhood, for her own creativity. I think that's also important. I would say these are, these are the words, three things as a wrap up. Number one, we are all product of our nature, but we are major product of our nurturance. And the nurturance lies in the hands of parents and teachers. And secondly is that we do not have institutional systems sufficient enough, adequate enough, comprehensive enough, and uh, credible enough for both child care and elder care. And we need systems. We need these answers. We need these answers, which means that there is, has to be a coalition of the government, the NGOs, and uh, women's organizations, and family organizations, where they all come together to find these solutions. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma truly, thank you. Um, we truly acknowledge your hard work and commitment that you've uh, served with our, to our, so our country. And thank you for sharing your views on um, women's, keeping up women's energy throughout the facets or in our own um, house and outside. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today.